Loops that I'm using is 60 mil. Um, I've seen in the video, I've got quite a bit of this. The best way of cutting this that I found, uh, you could just use a knife to cut through it, but I found a hacksaw works pretty well. Just saw through it. Uh, be careful you make the cut straight, as you can see here, I've not exactly done that with this piece. Um, it's worth noting you don't want to damage the internal um, silver lining because uh, it will cause the pipe to disintegrate under the heat. So you definitely need to make sure of that. To uh, root this pipe work, all I'm using is I've got a 64 mm hole saw. Um, I find this is the uh, perfect size. You can just about um, get the pipe work through it. So you could use a slightly larger one, but that's what I'm using. So that's a 64 mm hole saw, and that just screws on to a, uh, a mount. These are really cheap, you'll get them from tool station for not very much and if you're only using it for cutting through thin pieces of wood, not exactly where you need a really good one. Uh, I've got a little blank here I use and they use this for measuring up holes. You can see this one's a 64mm there, so that the side of it. So just have a look how that pipe work fits through. We'll see I actually have to twist the pipe work to get it through. Once it's through a bit I can actually pull it. So that's the kind of fit a 62 mil gives you. Brilliant. Uh, let's get back to the installation, eh? So this here is the ducting that came with my unit when it was new. So this is official ducting. Um, I've purchased some extra ducting, five meters of it off eBay. I'll give it a try for this installation. If I have any problems, um, I'll post a video about that. Other things that we'll need for the installation is any connectors um, and vents that we're going to use. Here's some T connectors that I'm going to use in mine. Uh, this one here is slightly different and enables us to screw a vent into it. Whether I'll use it in that function, we'll see. There's lots of connectors out there. Um, Ys are available as well. And it's worth noting that the overspatial and basto parts are interchangeable. Anything that uses 60mm ducting is fine. These vents here, these are 60mm Wabasto ones. Um, I opted to get these as I think their appearance is a bit better. Their vents are fully closable um, and they click lot and they have a really slim line profile. Uh, I believe these were actually also a few pounds cheaper than the Herbospatia ones. I have opted for in the shower to use an Herbospatia vent. This is the vent here. Um, it's just got a hood over it, so hopefully that will prevent water from splashing in. Um, and it will mean that I don't have to close the vent while um, in there. So, right, let's get started and have a look at what we've done so far. So as we can see, the pipe work I've got is in place. We're starting in the shower where I've already drilled a 64mm hole and put the first part of the vent in. This is just Jubilee clipped onto a section of ducting, which I've fed back underneath underneath my water heater there, and we're just making his way towards the heater in the corner. Um, it's worth considering when we're adding ducting that there are limits to the length of ducting we can put in, um, how many joints it can have, um, every corner that's in the pipe work all affects this. So check out my companion video um, on the technical bits to do with the installation. Um, or it is possible that you can make a mistake here and overheat your heater, which could be a fairly expensive mistake. So I'm not going to bore too much. Um, the installation is really simple. We're just going to be drilling a few 64mm holes, hacksawing a bit of pipe work and getting it connected. So let's fast forward to the pipe work together and let's have a look at it. So here we are in the van. We've got the end result. I've got everything together. Um, as I say, fairly, fairly simple. Um, I do it behind these little covers here. If we pop that off, which is easy enough done, you'll see we've got a couple of screws that hold the... Uh, the vent cover in place, pop that back on for you. On the back, uh, it's as simple as we've just got a Jubilee clip. This uh, pipe work ducting just fits over the uh, centerpiece and holds it in place. T connector there, section of pipe work, just made sure we've nipped all these up. There we go. Um, I'm missing a Jubilee clip. Um, Jubilee connector for this section and um, for this section here just didn't have uh, have them in so I have to go get some of those from the stores or order some um, with this T piece that I had that I this uh, section screwed into um, all I've done is I flip it around I've ended up just bonding them together just to make up an extra T just to save myself buying one um, I probably will order a correct T piece for it I just wanted to get the system together so we could have a look at it and uh, there's the vent, it's exactly the same as the other vent. Uh, on this one, just to improve the airflow through it, I've actually taken out the uh, 
piece that allows us to move it around, uh, to focus it and close it off. Carry on going through. We're over to the shower. Whereas in, where in here, I've got my other vent. It's directional again. Um, this shower is designed so it doubles as a, uh, as a drying room. So you can, you can close it off there, uh, up in the roof. Um, I've got midge guard fitted and I've got a uh, roof fan that opens up and in here we do have an extractor fan as well so we can uh, get rid of the moist air uh, and hopefully get kit dry during um, the winter time. So brilliant, um, wet patches unfortunately are not to dehumidifier. So what I did is um, as I came into the van to start showing us around I've turned on the unit itself and um, we've been running for two minutes now oh, just come up to three minutes we're beginning to get some warm air so let's have a look at how warm that air is I've got a temperature gauge here so we can see at the moment it's 12 degrees in the van um, and what are we gonna get from this let's put that a bit closer in I think the air temperature will finally get out of these is about 70 degrees so this will give us an idea of how much the heat is warmed up so our heat has been running now for seven minutes um, the van is up to 25 degrees so that is a fair increase I think it was 12 when we initially came in so this is the thermometer here just on the end so yeah already got an 11 degree difference in seven minutes that's quite good for, for me I'm happy with that and just coming back to the heat as we can see that um, this vent here we've got mm, not quite 70 yet but we're definitely uh, oh there we go 70 degrees um, I've not really seen much hotter than 70 degrees from these vents if they're back from the unit so I think we're probably at maximum heat there we've got 71 degrees maximum at that vent move across to the vent here so two degrees difference um, and that's two degrees lost this uh, section is a bed so probably lost in not much piping at all there less than two three meters and the sh in the shower See that I'm not cheating as I just post that inside. So yeah, we can see 64, so we've lost another three oh, 65 there, so we've lost another few degrees and um, just going that extra little bit into the shower. Obviously the more vents we have and the further they are away from the unit, the cooler they will get. Um, but it shouldn't really um, affect us too much in a small van unit. Um, the D2 is a great little unit um, for much bigger systems than this. So at the moment I've got uh, three vents spread out within this van. Um, you really want to start thinking about getting the D3, 4 or 5 unit. Brilliant. Let's get ourselves um, back in and let's finish this up. So there we are. That's our unit installed. Um, Thanks for following me through this video series. If you've got any um, questions or issues relating to the Herbospatia or anything else you've seen in the van, feel free to uh, ping me a message, leave it in the comments box, I'll get back to you. As well as this video series, um, there's also a section called the technical bits that I've included in two other um, videos where we're just talking about the angles. It's quite um, important, the angles the pump's mounted on, how much internal ducting we have, um, the angles we mount the overspecial and what it's all run on so it's definitely worth watching that if you're considering um, mounting one or installing a unit in a van or anywhere else for that matter. Thanks for watching um, and great to hear some feedback. Cheers, bye!